Okay, everybody. Um, thank you, Julia, for the warm introduction. Um, as she said, I'm a general dentist, but my office uh, is I'm practicing uh, mainly implant dentistry from basic to very advanced, uh, including but not limited to restoration of atrophic maxilla and mandible. I'm having courses for the zygoma courses, uh, uh, implants and pterygoid implants in Brazil, live patients. So many of you may know me in person, many of you may know me uh, on uh, uh, from Facebook. Okay, um, uh, today uh, I would like to uh, uh, start with uh, some thought that um, the current situation that we are at this COVID-19 uh, put our profession in a very, very bad situation that it's hard for us to practice and earn. Uh, the world of dentistry, according to my opinion, will not be the same in the near future. A lot of people will be unemployed. They will not have uh, resources and money to come and do elective works. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, finance company uh, will not finance unemployed patients. So we have to think of how we have a secure pipe of uh, income to our office. The only uh, uh, one that will be really secure is the Medicare program. The Medicare program has many thinking that is uh, uh, working with Medicare, it's uh, creating fraud, is, uh, you can be in jail, uh, they, they, they audit you and they put you in jail. All this can happen only if you commit fraud. But if you do not commit fraud and you do the work, you, you benefit from that. And the patient that has the benefits, benefits as well. The Medicare program, and the medical uh, uh, PPO programs are designed to give uh, benefits to patients for procedure that the dental insurance is not covering. And uh, Leon later will go more in detail. Now, saying all that is that we have to understand that we are the MD of the oral cavity. The oral cavity has three structures, has the teeth, the soft tissue, and the hard tissue. The teeth belong to the dental insurers. The soft tissue and the hard tissue belongs to the medical insurance. Now, saying that, we have to look at it in this way. I will make it very simple and then we will go in detail. Medicare will pay for everything that you do, removing or adding tissue or bone. If you cut tissue or you add tissue, if you cut bone or you add bone, that will be covered. All this aid will be covered if it's medically necessary. A medical necessity needs to be uh, in place. And what does it mean, medical necessity? And we'll go in detail later. Is patients that they have Medicare, they are adult, they are over 65 years old, they have comorbidities. So if a patient has an infection in a tooth, uh, let's say number 30 has a big uh, periapical uh, lesion and the tooth is broken, is broken, and the gums are inflamed above that. So he has infection of the gums and he also has infection of the bone. These are infection in the body. That's why removing the tooth, cutting the tissue, cleaning that, that uh, periapical lesion, adding bone, all this will be medical necessity and you will pay it and you will pay it a lot and we will go over that. In order to get uh, all this built correctly, uh, I know Leanne for the last five years, and I work with her for the last three years. Uh, uh, before I work with other dealers and coders that they did not do the work as she does. She is a dealer, she is a coder, and she is a uh, auditor for Medicare. 
uh, she knows she knows how to build up and mix all the codes together in order for you to get 100% paid for the procedure you do. Uh, when we will go to the procedures, you will see that a lot of the procedures they are done on daily basis. When you see patients, you don't get paid for because they are included in the fees that you take. For instance, you do an extraction, a surgical extraction. Where is the last time that you charge for cleaning the periapical lesion? When is the last time that you, pay, do you uh, charge the patient to cut and level the bone from the buccal and lingua? When, uh, when is the last time that you got paid for suturing? When is the last time you got for remove suture? So all these procedures, you do them on ba daily basis and it's part of your fees. Now, if your fees are high or low, it makes no difference. You don't charge separately. But by Medicare, you are getting paid for that. And the last thing I want to say, don't be afraid and see all this. Oh, that doctor lost his license. That doctor went to jail. Then it's all because they committed fraud. And here, um, I want to pass uh, the microphone to Leanne. And after that, I will intervene when it comes to medical terms and what I think about. Go, Leanne. Thank you, Dr. Rosens. My name is Lance, and I will uh, talking discuss about that why you should build implants and oral surgery to Medicare, and why should dentists become Medicare provider? How can enroll into in network or out network of medical provider, and the reason why, and what are oral surgery procedure that dentists can build to Medicare, and how much is the Cover uh, um, reimbursement rate and how to get up to 100% success uh, rate for oral surgeries and implant with Medicare. And what should you prepare for reopen your, your office to see patients? And what code dentists can build to Medicare or medical PPO for COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, so we get into why you should view implant and oral surgery to Medicare. First of all, you are dentist and with Medicare, when we cross over to become a Medicare provider, uh, you can render the oral surgery uh, and view into Medicare and Medicare is a no prior authorization required for most of the procedure. And the Medicare will pay 80% of their contract fee depend on your office region. And the uh, other 20% is will be the either the supplement pay for 20% or the PPO insurance. Why should dentists become to Medicare providers? First of all, is 85% of your surgery patient as senior. So they are 65 or above and senior patient have Medicare automatic when they turn 65. Also is another type of uh, patient you might see that they have Medicare, which is disability uh, patient. Also they have automatic, they have Medicare cover for them. Um, also is Medicare are very, very low deductible, only $198 per calendar year. Most of the time is by, when the patient seeing you by February or March, those months is patient, most of the time they already met their deductible because they already see their medical doctor before they see you. And, um, also, it's 10,000 boomer turn to 65 daily. So the majority of the patient to uh, have a Medicare is very, very majority when they do surgery. And also it's no prior authorization requires that I mentioned in last slide. And most oral surgery procedure will be covered. And I will go to detail which procedure will be covered uh, coming up next slide. Why should dentists enroll into in-network commercial PPO insurance provider in-network? So, 
the benefit in network of PPO uh, providers, which is they have low deductible in network compared to out of network. But I will tell you who can be in network PPO provider and who are not. Okay. And also, when it's in network, you can guarantee payment for in network as well. And in network is cover up to 90% of the fee schedule. And few of major surgery like implant, bone graft, sinus slip, tissue graft, anything of that implant payment, it will be uh, very few of them require prior authorization or pre certification. And the claim will be processed for the payment. What does I mean the claim will be processed? Because as you are the dentist, you're not in, in AMA provider with this medical, uh, American Medical uh, Association. So because of that, we need to manually cross you to be in medical provider. Now I will talk to who will qualify to be in network medical PPO. There are oral maxillofacial surgeon and oral maxillofacial surgeon MD are the only two type can be enrolled in network with medical. Um, because the reason of they require admitting hospital for that provider, general dentist, prosthodontist, periodontist, those have not have admitting hospital provider. So only this provider oral surgeons are qualified for in network. I highly recommend if you would like to bill for medical PPO insurance, I recommend dentists should be enrolled for out of network commercial medical PPO. And the reason why of that is because the dentist when they, you can bill to medical PPO uh, because the claim will be processed and you will receive the reimbursement. Without enrolling to our network provider, the claim I will sit in there and it will, it will cause unprocessed claim. Our network is opposite with in network PPO, which is higher deductible, but you still can bill if when you in uh, in our network provider, the our network provider is cover from fifty percent to sixty percent reimbursement. Your patient will pay uh, forty to fifty percent out of pocket. Our network provider, when you submit the claim, the claim will be processed, and then you will be on their list of medical provider list. Who can be enrolled to our up network provider? Is oral maxillo surgeon, oral maxillo surgeon MD? They have an option in network or our network. It's up to them. A general dentist, periodontist, prosthodontist, endodontist, pediatric dentist, and orthodontist. Top medical insurance payer that I'm highly recommend if you want to be in network or our network provider, which is Medicare Part B. For Medicare Part A, it for for any other doctors who also rendering treatment as a hospital. Is Tricare? What is Tricare? Tricare is um, active military patients. And CHMPA are retiring military patient. Aetna, as you know, you have Aetna Dental, Aetna Medical. They have Anthem Blue Cross. They have Anthem Blue Shield. They have Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. Cigna, HealthNet, United Healthcare, GHA and U.S. government worker comp. That is the list of the insurance I'm highly recommend if you want to build to medical. What are 
oral surgery procedure that dentists can build to Medicare. So a lot of dentists asking me, where is, what is the procedure I can build? Whenever you adding bone, removing bone, adding tissue, removing tissue, place implants or remove implant fail. You can build immediate denture or stay place. You can build permanent removable denture and a closer guard, my guard, or even proxism appliance. Okay, uh, Lian. So here is the point that as a clinician, all of us seeing patient on daily basis. The patient you did for him, uh, somebody else did an implant a uh, couple months ago, a couple years ago, and he comes with the implant loose and you remove it. You remove it and at least at my practice, I never charged before. But now medical pay for that and Medicare paid nicely for removal of that. Sometimes the removal is only to pull it out. Sometimes you use trephine, something. But anyway, uh, this is one of the procedures that when it comes to, to reality in the practice, we do it on a lot of these procedures. We do it on, ba on daily basis without charging them. And when we were with the math today, you will be in shock that how much you can get for one extraction bone graft and implant versus what you are getting now, even though when you are in the highest uh, uh, price tag in United States. So let's go forward and we, and we meet that point. Yes, Leah. So the most common treatments that is, so you can get a 100% successful rate reimbursement with a married anti, which is exam consultation, even though post-op evaluation. So you never be post-op evaluation to dental insurance because they don't cover for that. They only pay you twice a year for exam. With medical, you are unlimited billing exam consultation and post-op any of x-ray, intraoral photo panel sub, you can be into medical with unlimited as well. Um, uh, CBTC scan is unlimited. Oral sedation, IV sedation, general anesthesia. Oral uh, surgical splint is um, dental term, it's called surgical stand. Bone graft. Sinus lift, silent augmentation repair, surgical tooth extraction, like example, incision drainage for abscess, tissue abscess removal, bone abscess removal, cyst excision. I anything of this procedure that relate into surgical tooth extraction we haven't able to bill to dental because they are not covered for that because that's is medical, um, uh, anything tissue and bone, that is medical side. Biopsy, tissue graft, crown lengthening. So on crown lengthening, so why is somebody haven't heard that we can build crown lengthening because when crown lengthening is a, dental terminologies when i cross for you to medical i will uh, definitely not cross to medical terminologies and it will be different terminology of that srp is a, like deep cleaning as well so um laser treatment therapy for body me prp uh, cgf titanium endo steel implant screw Osteoplasty, osteotomy, and osteoplasty reduce. That is when you repair for the denture patient. So uh, mm -hmm. when, we, when we do an implant, we do the osteotomy. We charge for it already part of our implant placement. But with the Medicare or the medical PPO insurances, 
this osteoto is separate procedure and it's a lot of money. Uh, I don't want to say the, the amount because it will come later, but it's a lot of money. So if you do some osteoplasty before you are putting the implant, before uh, preparing the osteotomy to place the implant, let's say you level the bone, you call it osteoplasty, and you're placing the implant, these parts, you never charge them separately, but here it's separate. And when you see the numbers, then you understand why should you do that? Go, go. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Rosen. So we can build intermediate denture say plate, like I mentioned last slide, permanent removable denture prosthetic, occlusal guard appliance, proxism appliance, and sleep apnea assessment, sleep apnea appliance. For sleep apnea appliance, I want to tell you more like when you uh, credential to be medical Medicare provider, you are not able to build sleep apnea appliance. Sleep apnea appliance is only for DME, it means dual medical equipment. Then when you have to enroll that is separately application for you able to render sleep apnea appliance. The TMTA, TMD uh, treatment and TMTA, TMD appliance uh, orthodontal jaw expansion uh, for orthodontists, uh, Botox injection for TMJ, and appliance adjustment. Uh, Leanne, go back please to the screen. So let's say that uh, we want to do um, a full arch with uh, all on X, technique. So what we will have here that will be separated from the fixed fee that we get. First of all, we will have, we will have the uh, exam and consultation before, then we have the CT scan. If we do oral sedation or IV sedation, it will be. Then we will make a surgical spleen. The bone graft will be part. The extraction will be part. The osteotomy, osteoplasty will be part. The immediate denture that will do Im immediate denture after the surgery, and we do it by conversion or we do it by digital. I do it in my office. Uh, I have this in six hour technique that I do all digital, but uh, whatever you do, that is part uh, also. And if you do uh, uh, bone grafting using the CGF and PRP, so you get separated for phlebotomy and separate for the CGF. And all these together will be separate uh, uh, billing codes, codes for a procedure that you already have a fixed fee for, and it will be additional to fixed fee that you charge. And then uh, when you look at that, you can uh, also discuss it with the patient that part of these procedures will be paid by Medicare and they pay only the stuff that Medicare doesn't pay. And then you will see more acceptance of cases uh, 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 for the uh, full arches. And now, especially in this situation that I said in the beginning, it will be very hard for us practitioners to jump on the arches. Uh, it will be hard for people to be financed for that. It will be hard for them to pay. So this is just keep in mind that you're doing a procedure that you always did, but the billing is totally different and it goes on separate codes that rewarding you much more than you even imagine. Yes, Leah, go more. Yes, thank you, Dr. Rosen. Uh, here I give you some of example of the reimbursement from uh, PPOs and Medicare based on California fee schedule. Um, so Medicare California fee schedule is example right here and I explain to you some of them is, is on the screen. So example in medical are different with dental uh, uh, reimbursement. Dental for the exam, the reimbursement based on one code, 
which is a, a new patient office visit or established patient office visit. But with medical, they are divided by minutes. How many minutes you render consultation with the patient? Like example on the screen, 15 to 20 minutes. The Medicare in California fee schedule is 91. Um, I'm sorry. 9148 and um, right here is 9148 and uh, let's say it 35 to 45 minutes is $195.30 and 50 minutes to 60 minutes you have a uh, $244. This is California fee schedule. If you have a different state, then it's when I credential for you to Medicare provider, you have your own fee schedule with that. And after they become, you become into Medicare provider, I will send you the fee schedule on your region. Same thing I give you example is one PA x-ray with Medicare is $18.48. More than one x-ray within two or more, it will be $47.99. And full mouth x-ray will be $68.12. And uh, intraorals, some of the dentists asking me, what is intraoral? It's the same thing, intraoral photos that you are taking at your uh, rendering at your office. So we can view that as well. Radiographic and CT scan fee schedule. So as you see up here, most of you have a CT scan and you can do in panoramic x-ray, uh, which is $25.37. And uh, CBCC scans uh, is uh, $178. Additional for 3D, which is every single uh, dentals, um, CBCC scan, it's have a 3D. So when we build it for you, we build a bulk code. The reason why at medical have is two code because the CAT scan in medical, they also have an option is uh, uh, non 3Ds and 3Ds. So that's why they, in medical, they have a two code for that. Prosthetics um, uh, appliance, uh, like surgical guy, uh, $908, so this is on top of your bone graft or implant placement. This is not included. So every, like Dr. Dan Rosen mentioned earlier, anything of the procedure you render, you add on. So it's on top of your main procedure. So like example, after you're done with the implants and you need to do intermediate denture or state plate, then that is also is $1,137 for um, emitted dentures and permanent removable denture is $1,900. One, one one, sorry, Leanne, one important thing. Uh, there's no overbilling with Medicare because we do not decide the, the amount to bill. Whatever you bill, this is the amount set and that's what you will get paid. It means there's no, you did overbilling. So the billing to Medicare goes according to what they decided to pay and what they agree for the region. And that's why you see that the, the amounts are big and when they're adding, they're adding together, you will see a lot. If we're looking here only on surgical guide for, for uh, uh, all on four, and you have the immediate and the last one is about 2,000, uh, 3,000, about $4,000 only for that one. That's a part of the rest of the treatment. Yeah. Yes. Um, when the patient is complaining about they have a sleep problem, they're grinding, you can render for them is making the sleep appliance using proxism appliance uh, code. And I can cross for you with that. Do you need to become DME for the proxism sleep appliance? The answer is no. Um, your credentialing with general for oral surgery uh, as a 
uh, Medicare provider for oral surgery provider, you can be a proxism slip appliance. General basic procedures, um, like example, we can build the post-op for exam like I mentioned. So the post-op exam is also based on how many minutes you want me to build it for you as well, but you can build up to 30 minutes max for the post-op. Can you build in the x-ray again on post-op? Absolutely. If you do the take any x-ray CC scan for post-op, uh, we can uh, build it again. That's the reason why I said unlimited. It's totally different opposite with dental insurance. It's really nice. And uh, phobotomy is, uh, phobotomy for, um, to Medicare fee schedule is $137. On when you draw the blood only, when you separate, separate your PRP CGF into your centrifuge, then it's additional, it's $1,054 to the Medicare as a California fee schedule. So a post-op uh, procedure is a nice uh, uh, example of what we do usually for free. Uh, the patient had last week a surgery, if it's one implant, if it's two implants, if it's all of make no difference. He come for post-op, we remove his stitches, we don't charge the patient. But with Medicare, it's billable, and we're getting for that. And it's accumulate every day because if you see like couple patients a day, it's accumulate. Correct, Dr. Rosen. So the top major oral surgery procedure that we have been successful get reimbursement for dentists into Medicare, which is upper bone graft, is um, for California fee schedule is 2,900. And lower bone graft, it's a fee schedule of 5,200. Implant preparation, like earlier, Dr. Rosen said, when you drill into the bone and go to osteotomy, it's 1,400. If you can't tool the bone, remove to anything bone access, it will be osteoplasty, it's 2,292. Uh, implant uh, material, so when you buy material from Norris, is for California region or uh, um, West, um, West Coast in, in, in California, Nevada, uh, Arizona, those states, uh, we, our implants, um, our implant material are including our um, osteotomy and osteo uh, osteotomy fee schedule up here. But it's the other state like uh, East Coast, uh, the, the implants fees uh, right here for more than three implants or less than three implants, the material is also reimbursement for the other state like Let Florida, me. New York, New Jersey, uh, as, uh, Texas. So those state is also get additional reimbursement for material when you purchase this. Uh, one thing, uh, when we look here at the bone graft, the bone graft, it can be one tooth and it will be one quadrant. Uh, so the bone graft is Anybody in the audience that looking now got $5,200 for one bone graft, please raise your hand. It's, 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 not, it's not available in anywhere, not in the private sectors, not in other insurances. And that it was a suite here and we did not decide and we are not deciding and not mandating how much to pay. Medicare decided that for mandibular bone graft, one tooth to eight teeth or whatever is that, that's the amount they paid. And they paid every time Leanne Bill, I'm getting that money and it's sweet. Again, again, it has to have medical necessity behind the procedure. If you do it with no medical necessity and you get audited, then is the problem with Medicare. Then is that, oh, you have to reimburse money, you committed fraud. But if you have everything documented, I personally want to tell you that all the procedures that I do with Medicare, 
from the moment I extracting the tooth, I take pictures. I take picture of the tooth. I take picture of the blood drawing. I take picture how many uh, tubes of blood I took. I take picture of the CGF membranes that I produce. Uh, I take picture of the sticky bone that I prepared. And all these pictures are going to, uh, to the patient uh, chart. They stored in the patient chart. In case I will have any, any question from Medicare, I will have a proof. And this is take two minutes of your time to take pictures. Please adapt it to create less problems in the future. Thank you, Dr. Rosen. Um, I will explain to you why is rumor out there in later on onto the I open for question and answer later on um, that I will explain to you why is people said is billing to Medicare or medical will be fraud or some people get uh, some dentists get audited with it and I will tell the reason why okay uh, if you have any concern with that. Um, I want to continue with that the fee schedule sample like sinus lift, um, lateral approach or vertical approach that are totally two different codes for that. So here I, my example for lateral approach, this will be $853, is that will be on top of bone graft upper, okay? So it, that when you render bone graft upper without sinus lift, is 2,900. But when you render bone graft with sinus lift, this will be add on $853 on top of 2,900. Leanne, please uh, uh, clarify this point. So when we do a sinus lift, they pay 853 for the preparation of the window and not for the bone graft that you put inside the, the sinus. The moment you're adding that, so it will be additional 2,900? Is that the yes. way? You, okay. Yes, so 2,900 plus $853. That's to clarify that, okay. Yes. Um, pedicle soft tissue graft uh, is uh, 1,100. Drainage abscess. So drainage abscess here is my example for simple drainage abscess. Is drainage abscess have multiple drainage abscess when you work with me when I do the um, uh, the training for uh, for you, for your each of the office. I will go to detail all the uh, requirement for all of each code. So each of the code they have a, a requirement for that. So we need to understand the requirements and uh, the uh, definitions of each of the procedure and what do we need to do to get reimbursement for all that. Uh, cyst excision, uh, tissue abscess removal, um, and bone uh, abscess removal, uh, anything of that is will be on top and add on just for surgical tooth extraction. Same thing as after you do extraction, some of you might do in suture, then the suture will be on top of that. It will be add-on. This is, this is very interesting. Uh, Medicare pay for sutures by centimeters. So when you do stitches and you uh, put uh, how many stitches you did, you put it by centimeter and it paid by centimeter. And it jumped in, in, the, in the price uh, from one centimeter to five centimeters. Yes, thank you, Dr. Rosen. Yeah, when you work with the mayor Dante, we go detail about each of that code because they have, this is just my example. It's so much more into detail by centimeter, by length of the minutes, by length of the suture, by the each different type of excisions, uh, drainage abscess, it different type of cyst removal. So we apply exactly of the procedure you render. So you, so is is your fee schedule on each of the code into the detail that will be a little bit different too. So as Dr. Rosen mentioned earlier at the beginning when we uh, mentioned is mouse uh, is a human body, part of human body. So that's the reason why is oral surgeries are part of medical. 
what is different between dental and medical? Um, each of the, your patient, as you know, is each of us, we have minimum two types of insurance benefit, which is dental insurance and medical insurance. Um, I highly recommend medical insurance as primary policy when you build into oral surgery. And the dental policy will be secondary. The reason why I, may, I, I recommend that because of oral surgeries into dental, they cover only either implants payments and for oral surgery implant, and that's it, abutment and crowns. But in two medical, you can build in like bone graft, sinus slip, tissue graft, membrane, phobotomy, exam, x-ray, sutures, and so, so on, okay? So that's the reason why is I recommend is medical are the primary. Also, the second is reason why I recommend the uh, medical uh, insurance are primary policy is also like when you, uh, render of uh, exams or uh, x-ray is no limit cover as well as no maximum re uh, uh, cover for that. It's unlimited cover. Um, so I give you example right here. What does that mean unlimited? So medical billings reimbursement, the fee schedule are higher and also most of the procedures that it from dental uh, uh, insurance, they only cover 50%. And the treatments from medical insurance, I pay a higher fee and no maximum cover. The treatment in dental insurance, I cover to have the maximum of 1,000 to 2,000 per year. So that's why they limit up your exam your x-ray, full mouth x-ray panel is only for like panel and CBT um, and the um, full mouth x-ray, uh, your dental insurance, uh, their dental insurance are covered like uh, one every three years or one every five year to medical is unlimited filing. As long as when you take it for your like exam, like example, like exam uh, consultation, when can you bill it? Like example, when you need to do exam for the patient and you find into the new diagnosis, that is a time that you legally can bill to examination into medical insurance. Um, same thing with the x-ray. You don't take the x-ray, it's just for you to view it for your bone graft place. You take the x-ray for you to do diagnosis so that's x-ray or CT scan, I can view it for you as long as when you take it and you have a, a, a exam for that, the reason of it. The in the middle here is um, uh, collapsed together right here, which is the procedure you can view from dental, you can view from medical, which is I give you example earlier, that exam, x-ray, um, you can bill to dental insurance and you can bill to medical insurance. You have an option to choose which insurance you want to bill, but you don't bill double bill for that. So you compare of the uh, reimbursement fee schedule and also the guidelines that could like the dental when you already bill exam uh, into dental at the beginning of the years. And now you need to take another x-ray and do additional examination for that. And then you should be able to medical because then they're not gonna cover for that. But you have an option where you wanna bill it. Uh, I talking to about uh, exam consultation post often CC scan. Uh, what dental procedure we can build to medical insurance? Um, again, I just wanna summarize, most of the treatment that you work on your daily basic, you can build to medical insurance. And is this totally legal? Um, why is not legal? The only thing that is, it's not legal, if you build to medical insurance on the, any procedure that you haven't rendered. 
So there was a few years ago, have a medical MD will get arrested to, and um, uh, because he never, he built for a lot of procedure um, to medical insurance and get reimbursement, but those patients, he never see those patients. So that is uh, fraud billings that you will get arrested. Besides of that, when you render the treatment, you bill to medical insurance, that's not fraud at all. Why you need to take the CC scan? Because I give you example, like PA right here, you bury, I barely see any abscess. So if you do render surgical tooth extraction and it's on the record, it doesn't show any abscess or any um, uh, bone abscess, any tissue abscess, any abscess that I can build for drainage abscess, then it's hard for me to prove into medical insurance for reimbursement. But when you take in the CT scan, it's showing, as long as it's showing and you have it on record, I can build it for you. So here, here again, uh, that's that's a demonstration that Leanne did here, is a medical necessity. The extraction is for medical necessity, is not for cosmetic reason. That's what give you the the allowance to use the benefits, the medical benefits through Medicare for the patient. That you're removing the tooth and you're restoring that area again. And it's not considered cosmetics because it has medical necessity behind that. Yes. So I give you on my screen right here, example of the patient have diabetes, the patient have lean into severe bone atrophy. Um, and this is our medical necessity up to medical insurance because patient have lax posterior support, the patient have severe bone thin bridge, um, any abscess around the gum line, like on the uh, uh, photos right here, is this medical necessity. Anything abscess can lean into patient failure, heart failure, it can be into dangerous for their health. As for the bone atrophy, thin bridge, is the patient, heck, um, I have a medical necessity that is a uh, cannot uh, support for them with the digest um, uh, during the, uh, the the digest with the um, uh, food digesting. So they have a problem with that. So that is our medical necessity for it. The, so, uh, I give you the sample of surgical tooth extraction. What is the procedure we can build in surgical tooth extraction? Um, like drainage abscess, tissue abscess removal, bone abscess removal, cyst excision, or phobotomy, PRP, and suture. When you play the bone graft or sinus lift um, example, uh, what is procedure we, you can build when you play the bone graft, like bone graft, um, PRP, uh, phobotomy, suture, membrane, anything of that is, is cover that. And sinus lift, of course, if it's in, involved into your bone graft. Um, when you build the exam panel, uh, surgical splint, I give you example of the, how much is the reimbursement from the Medicare um, Medicare, like example, when you do the x-ray panel, surgical splint, um, the fee schedule, Medicare pay 80% of that, and it is $892.70. The $232, that is from supplement. So the total of that procedure you get is around $1,124. Leon, please uh, clarify the supplemental payments, where it comes from. A uh, supplement, so pay, Medicare patients have more, like I mentioned, have more than one insurance. They are holding more than one insurance. So when your patient come in, when you asking for the insurance card, they're giving you Medicare, 
but the patient that also have a supplement with the other insurance that because Medicare only cover 80 percent the patient don't want responsible 20 percent well because the elderly they are high risk to go to the hospital uh, uh, um, more frequent so that's what the 20 percent is really high for them to pay out of pocket so that's why they buying the supplement the supplement is like a ppo but it's connected directly with medicare and only medicare patient are qualified to buy the supplement and the supplement will pay uh the 20 percent but medicare the rest of medicare not cover for it thank you So on here is the EUB that I uh, mentioned earlier. So it's for Medicare. It's, uh, right here is a Medicare service center. Uh, it's paying $892.70. I zoom it, make it, make it right here for you. It's, it's um, $82.92.70 right here. And the supplement is like under here, it will cover for supplement is $232. So surgical tooth extraction, like I mentioned, what we can build. So uh, bone abscess, tissue abscess, drainage abscess, phobotomy, PRP, CGF, membrane, and suture. The Medicare are paying, example for this case, is $1,000.11. Um, and is uh, supplement at cover $480. The total, they got almost like $1,500 for and surgical tooth this is without the bone graft. Here, if you notice, you're removing the tooth, you are cleaning that uh, uh, area, and you just put there the CGF membrane. You even don't charge here for the bone graft yet, and you come to 1491, almost 1500. That's uh, unheard. Yeah, that's is. Um that is on top of exam and surgical uh, guy that I mentioned into the last slide. And I give you example of implant surgery, like um, in here is um, as example for if you do the exam, CC scan, any panel, x-ray, uh, bone graft, phobotomy, PIP, CGF, and suture, um, you receive the reimbursement from 6,000 to 12,000 depend on the patient insurance plan for it. So here I have a EOB example for you. Uh, this patient having um, the exam CC scan, uh, lower bone graft, phobotomy, PRP, and membrane suture in one visit total. It's a it go into one visit, so it's a, it's a combined all visit together in one time, so, which is most of the dentist does and the fees reimbursement for medicare is only 80 percent right here is seven thousand here this is a post off um, as, um eob example so i uh, this doctor running the post off for 30 minutes and taking the um panels uh, at the uh, the panel and the reimbursement is $92.89 to Medicare, and the supplement is $32.39. So the total to suppose off is $125 when the patient have a supplement. So if you don't build the post off, um, you see that you've been missing that uh, mon money, and you calculate it up how many patients you rent the post off per month, you're missing a lot of money out of that. Something interesting that I found in my office uh, um, after I started to build Medicare is that I saw that most of my patients, they have Medicare that before I even didn't know. And when I saw how much I missed all these years, this hurts, but uh, it's better late than never. How to get up to 100% success rate for your oral surgery and implant with Medicare um, first of all, you cannot bill to Medicare, uh, submit the claim to Medicare without 
uh, credentialing to Medicare, become Medicare provider. So first step, you have to sign up to become Medicare provider. The second is that, that you have to understand the different type of Medicare. There are more than one type of Medicare patient. They, like example, supplement, patient have Medicare supplement, the patient have Medicare PPO, the patient have Medicare Advantage PPO, the patient have Medicare Advantage HMO, and Medicare Medic, Medicaid, um, and uh, uh, so much, uh, a few more. So you have to understand the different type so we can, when we render treatment, which one is will be uh, Medicare are primary, it doesn't require pre op which one is Medicare are secondary, that is required pre op anything of that is we will work on to together to explain to you more detail. Um, so uh, also how to find the right diagnosis for medical necessity. Uh, that is also important to get the claim successful, get reimbursement. And I am uh, highly suggest that if it's leave the billing up to us so we can code it for you so we can make sure you get reimbursement because we will follow up the claim. We make sure you, when after we submit the claim, we follow up the claim, we make sure is you get reimbursement. If it's any claim that is rejected, by some of the reason like diagnosis that not meet into the procedure, we will discuss with you and we will, uh, we will um, help you to find the diagnosis so we can, re, uh, we can correct the claim and resubmit the claim so make sure you get the reimbursement. So I will have uh, advice uh, for you for HR advisors who support you for uh, mental health during COVID-19. Um, I work with the HR consultant, um, and uh, I will put into uh, the slide here for recommended for you. Uh, how do you recall employee back to work? And how do you, should you screen employee uh, and your patient for COVID-19? Keep you safe, employee safe um, as well when you render it, and understanding the latest rule from the uh, DOL relating to the FFCRA. And what should you prepare for reopen your office to see the patient? And what can dentists bill to Medicare or medical PPO for COVID-19 during the pandemic? So, So we, uh, what should dentists prepare for reopen uh, your office to see patient? You should do the consultation using telemedicine code. Um, what is the requirement of that? I will talk into uh, next. You screen them by using COVID-19 examination form and you have to have a consent form for them to sign. Um, how do they sign that? I will talk next. Uh, COVID-19 test for your patient and uh, you uh, should you buy air filter with UV light to help killing bacteria or you can buy a UV light to kill bacteria that you put in by any UV light. Um, I give you an example of that so you uh, uh, can help you to prevent as much as you can to get the COVID-19 um, infected and um, you can buy extra oral uh, negative pressure dental suction as well. So CMS uh, uh, release is a provider in public health. Uh, CMS uh, uh, developed the new code for the medical code for viewing COVID-19 uh, lab tests. Um, they also into uh, April uh, 14, they um, increase the fee reimbursement for COVID-19 tests. And um, the healthcare is also uh, showing that they will pay for what kind of tests that they get paid for a medical provider or as a dentist when you are a Medicare provider, you can bill for that as well. So Medicare will pay $100 uh, for COVID-19 tests. It's called Shaw 
uh, COVID-2 screening and, or clinical diagnosis lab test, and it was affect on April 14, 2020. This code affecting all April 14, and other COVID-19 lab tests are not listed uh, is uh, not mentioned earlier. It will be only fifty-one dollar for those tests. And I give you example: which one is hundred dollar, and which one is fifty-one dollar. What is the uh, telemedicine required into medical? There is have three type of telemedicine that you can build to medical insurance, which is telemedicine, or telehealth, or e-visit. Um, what is the requirements of that is you need to have a, a consent form to them. Uh, what you, how do you send the consent form to them is you can use doctor side to send it to them, or some of the uh, doctors is asking me that can they using Zoom um, for the consultation because it's requiring video consultation um, to build an, in telemedicine, which is you can use Zoom. Zoom is free. You can sign up and you can use Zoom and you can screenshot of Zoom or record it as well. On the Zoom, you can record when you uh, do consultation with the patient. And then you can send them the uh, consent form and they sign for it. And, and then you can bill for uh, telemedicine for that. Can dentists uh, do COVID-19 tests and get paid? Yes, dentists can bill COVID-19 tests if you are Medicare or medical provider. Um, so COVID-19 tests have three types which is soft COVID rabbit antibiotic uh, test kit. Um, that, uh, that kit is like when you, uh, I give you example later on, which is the second one is uh, RT is mean real time PCR diagnosis test. That kit is, you can uh, get it, uh, that kit is, uh, um, you use it uh, to uh, collect the specimen from the nasal from the nose. And then the third one is uh, RT with real-time PCR diagnosis test using blood um, like you do in phobotomy. And you send it to the lab and, and that's uh, test is you can build for that. Um, the sharp COVID-19 test, that test you can build it, but some of them is not FDA approved and I'm not recommend you uh, buying anything of this kit, I recommend that you buy any gun is like uh, have a FDA approved one. Um, the second test that I mentioned is um, that the antibody, the specimen one that when you draw the blood and you can um, you draw the blood and you can get the uh, uh, blood and send it to the lab. That's one you can build by that. And then the swap one, nasal swap uh, uh, test kit, uh, you can build in uh, for the, uh, you, you build for the test and that's one is $51 for that test. The other test that you using the rabbit test, that is $100 for that. So for this um, test is that you drawing the uh, phobotomy and you, it, different type of lab will be taking separate of the uh, uh, test tube. There was in the light blue test tube, a, a, a vacuum tube, and it's also, it's another lab, if they taking the purple one, the violet color. Um, so it's, uh, some of the lab, like the lab is a uh, uh, lab core, is they taking the light blue. So is you can contact any of your big lab, medical lab, and they will uh, let you know is what the test tube, the vacuum tube that you can uh, draw and uh, the blood and send it to them. Um, you cannot just draw whatever blood, uh, uh, the vacuum tube and then send it to them and assume they will do the uh, test for you. Um, they have a requirement, each of the lab, they uh, work in different color with it. Um, and uh, for I research into lab core, um, 
they taking the blue color. I have a doctor to a uh, um, medical doctor MD is is Dr. Cole. If some of you know is is uh, he taking the violet color. So um, uh, like Quest Lab is a I uh, know that they get the blue color. So most of the lab, big lab, uh, they are quality, uh, are they working, uh, follow the guideline with the um, CDC and uh, uh, CMS. So they follow into certain protocol to get the COVID-19 test for you.